Afternoon guys, Tesh coming at you. It's the 27th of May and just coming up to about 145 at the Indy 500 on the uh, TV this afternoon. We're going to switch back and forth between that and the ball game. So we're uh, going to have an enjoyable afternoon out here. Didn't get to uh, spend any time in the garage this week as I was again away on the west coast and just got back yesterday. So the first course of action was to cut the grass. It was about three feet tall. So we managed to do that. Now we'll uh, tinker around probably on the uh, 60 TR3A today. We've got a few spring projects to do. And one of those projects is to uh, fix a weeping line from my clutch master. So uh, I bought this last year to do that job, but uh, sort of put the job off. So I've got a couple of different lines here. Not sure exactly where the leak is coming from, so I've got all the components to exchange what needs to be exchanged. So I've got a couple of lines here. We've got a new fluid uh, reservoir for the, uh, I use run, I run dot three in the uh, TR3, or sorry, dot five in the TR3A, so we gotta suck all that old fluid out. And uh, I've also got a new um, clutch master uh, cylinder here as well to exchange out. I think what might be happening is either the clutch master uh, is broken, maybe the casting is broken and it's got a bit of a weep or the line is not bottoming out in the actual cylinder itself. So we'll figure out what's going on with that. But uh, first course of action is, like I said, to uh, probably suck all the old fluid out of that, uh, of that tank. And in order to do that, I've uh, borrowed my uh, turkey baster from the kitchen. So we won't be uh, basting any more turkeys with that, I don't expect. Anyway, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get ourselves a new turkey baster for inside the house. That'll be a new shop tool. Anyway, we'll uh, get the cover off the uh, TR3A and we'll get to work. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're running uh, dot five in our uh, fluid reservoir and in our hydraulic system for both brakes and clutch. Um, it's probably a good thing because this has been leaking um, over the winter time uh, in storage and uh, I could see some fluid loss up here on the bulkhead that I've just cleaned up and I can see it weeping just from that fitting right there. So, fortunately, like I said, Dot five is not a paint stripper, otherwise we'd be doing some painting as well. Anyway, what we're going to do is we are going to attempt to exchange this line out and see if we can actually get that fixed. So we'll uh, start that operation and it's a little bit tricky to get that line out, but we'll uh, do our best and we'll go from there. First thing I need to do is to suck the old fluid out of the fluid reservoir. So like I said, I'm going to use my turkey baster to do that. I've got a piece of uh, Tupperware here standing by. We'll put the fluid in there and we'll hope to reuse it as uh, dot five fluids pretty expensive you don't want to waste it okay it may sound like this is a fairly straightforward job but trust me it isn't the way that this uh, pipe gets snaked in between the two master cylinders it's one master for the uh, clutch and one master for the brake there's no way to get the pipe out unless you take this access panel out from underneath the dash so i'll show you where that access panel is behind the dash and we're going to take that out to be able to get the piping out so we're up under the dash and uh, you can see the access panel here. I'm not sure if you can see this slotted head screw, slotted head screw here, and there's a couple more up there. So we're going to remove this panel completely and that will expose the back of that uh, clutch and uh, brake master cylinder box. We hope. Alright, there's the access panel removed and I'll see if I can tip you up here. Sorry for the shaky camera. And there is the back of the clutch and brake master cylinders and there's the line I'm trying to remove so we'll try to bring it right through the back of this box where we just remove that uh, cap. Alright, we'll let you know how it goes. And as they say, Bob's your uncle, so we managed to just uh, maneuver that pipe right out the back and you see it hanging there. And We'll just finish the job and remove it right out the back and we'll get our new pipe, thread it back in there. Okay, we've managed to get the new line attached to the uh, clutch master at the back. And we're just working on uh, getting it attached to the bottom of the fluid reservoir. So we've uh, had to hand bend it a little bit, but not too bad. It was come, it came pre-bent from, uh, I believe I bought this from the Roadster factory. So it uh, should be fairly easy to fit, but uh, we'll see when we get the uh, fluid reservoir back in its uh, natural position, see how that uh, hooks up uh, on the bottom. For those of you who are not uh, side screen Triumph owners, may not know that there's actually two 
parts to the fluid reservoir, there's an inner chamber and an outer chamber. The inner chamber is basically a tube that runs up the center. And the inner chamber actually is the clutch fluid. The outer chamber is the brake fluid. So on the inner chamber, there's a nut that holds the tube to the bottom of the fluid reservoir. And sometimes if you're trying to do up this uh, line on the bottom, you need to put a socket inside to hold the nut while you can tighten this bottom. So just be aware that there's actually a nut in there holding the, uh, the uh, bottom fitting. All right, we've got her all hooked back up now to uh, check to see if that's fixed the uh, little weep in that fitting. Um, I did have to put the uh, fluid reservoir up a little bit as this line actually is a little bit taller uh, than the other line. So uh, we'll have to retouch up this uh, fluid reservoir with a little bit of black paint, but that's no, uh, no big deal. So uh, anyway, everything's all tight. Let's uh, put some fluid in it and we'll, uh, we're obviously going to have to bleed that system and uh, we'll see if we uh, have fixed our leak. All right guys, Wednesday the 30th of May, just uh, coming up to 8.35. Haven't been out here for the last few nights. We've got a busy week at work, so that precludes me from being out here after work. Just too darn tired. So we uh, are still working on that uh, weeping uh, line. I still haven't, uh, haven't verified that I've got it fixed yet. I still need to get the car up on jack stands and uh, bleed the clutch before I can uh, fully uh, check that it's been fixed. But I ex suspect that it has, but uh, like I said, we'll uh, Probably do that on Friday or Saturday and hopefully button that up. In the meantime, I was looking for a, uh, a short uh, power hour kind of job and um, I was looking at these hood pins and it's on my sort of my little to-do list that I wanted to shorten these hood pins because it's not cinching the bonnet down as tight as it should and that's creating a rattle in the bonnet at idle. And these bonnets tend to rattle anyway, but when they are loose, they rattle more. So. What I've done is I've just removed the uh, hood pin from the passenger side over here and we've actually cut some more threads in the chrome bit uh, to sort of shorten it so I can pull it down further. So what I'll do is I'll uh, show you the uh, cut down version versus this version. I'm going to take this off the car now. I'll take it over to the bench and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, I think you can see the difference here on what I'm trying to accomplish. So uh, I'm just basically trying to cut threads up higher. Um, I'm trying to obviously to try not to mark up the chrome too much. I've got the masking tape out, but unfortunately you've got to clamp this thing down pretty tight for, in order for the, uh, the cutting to work. So uh, anyway, we've got a few little marks here in there, but not too bad. No more than what's on there already. So anyway, so we're going to work on uh, cutting the threads in this one from the driver's side to match the passenger side. All right guys, starting to get dark out and the uh, power hour is now complete. We've got those uh, turned down, so uh, we will try to get out here tomorrow night and uh, we'll try to reinstall them and uh, snug that bonnet up, bonnet up and we'll check for uh, squeaks and rattles. All right guys, Saturday, June 2nd, just after 9 a.m., trying to get a bit of an early start out here. Um, pretty chilly out here this morning. It's only 20 degrees Celsius, so that's just under 70. Uh, compared to the last few days anyway where it's been uh, pretty hot uh, with the humidity actually a very high humidity here so it's been a little bit uh, uncomfortable uh, but anyway can't complain about that because we had an awfully long winter anyway we're gonna back uh, get back to working on the uh, 60 TR3 a uh, this morning and we're gonna finish up those hood pins reinstall those hood pins and uh, and I also plan on finishing up the uh, clutch today. So we're going to get the uh, car up on jack stands and uh, we're going to bleed that clutch line and then we'll uh, test it out and hopefully everything's going to be okay. We're planning to uh, take a bit of a road trip next weekend. Hopefully, maybe Lynn and I might be going up to uh, Blue Mountain Village for a car show on the Saturday if it's a nice day. So uh, hopefully we'll get this thing uh, in tip-top shape before then. It does need a good wash, that's for sure. So. Uh, once we get it road tested, we'll get some of this uh, grime off here. It hasn't been washed since it came out of storage, so about time to do that as well. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll stop uh, blabbing and we'll get to work. All right, guys, job one is done. The hood pins are back in, the hood's adjusted. I played around with the buffers a little bit as well on either side to uh, affect the uh, drop of the hood. So uh, we've got the buffer set up properly and uh, obviously we've got the hood pins tightened up. So hopefully that's gonna take some of the uh, the rattle or the vibration out of the bonnet. So uh, we're going to move on now to uh, putting the car up on jack stands and we're going to get under there. We're going to use our vacuum bleeder and we're going to bleed our clutch line and uh, see if we've solved that issue with that uh, weeping line. 
All right, we've got the TR3A up on stands, and we've got the vacuum bleeder out, and ready to go. Got the compressor charged up. Got our wrenches down there. I think it's a 7 16 on that uh, slave, but uh, could be a 3 8 so I've got those down there. I also have a metric wrench down there too. So anyway, looking like a bit like a old episode of Batman. Everything on an angle. Anyway, we'll get under there and uh, lead the clutch. We've got to be careful that we don't uh, run all the fluid out of the master or the uh, fluid reservoir as it's a quite a small reservoir for the clutch. So we'll keep an eye on that. We've got the cap on loosely. It does have a vent in the top of it. So anyway, we'll do a little bit of bleeding, come back up, fill it up, and then do a little bit more bleeding. So my TR3A actually has a TR6 transmission in it and it's mated to the original A-Type overdrive that came with this car. So, anyway, there's the, uh, the slave that we're trying to get at. You can see that the bleed screw is on top. That's to allow the air to get out. So, anyway, like I said, we're going to uh, get to it and hook up the vacuum bleeder. And hopefully this should be a fairly easy job. Okay, guys, that job is now done. And it seems like I've got uh, clutch pedals, which is good. I've just uh, filled back up the uh, fluid reservoir. For those in the, you know, that want to know, it is a 3 8 inch wrench on that bleed screw up there. So we're going to put the little rubber cap back on and uh, I think we're good to go. Oh, I should mention that um, this is a fairly easy procedure. Um, you don't necessarily need a vacuum bleeder. You can actually even gravity bleed this to a degree if you've got the bleed screw on top. Um, you know, just crack that bleed nipple open and let the fluid flow. And uh, like I said, you can sort of gravity bleed this as well. All right, last thing to do to button up this project is put that cover plate back on uh, at the back of the, uh, the pedal box or back of the uh, clutch and uh, brake master cylinders. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. We'll climb under the dash, fix these four little uh, screws, and uh, we should be good to go. I should probably go for a little spin around the block just to check it out, see if it still works. Let's see if we can do a completely cold start. Choke out. Neutral. Almost. There we go. Alright, we'll let it warm up and take it for a quick spin. So right away, just idling here in the garage, I can already tell that the, uh, the bonnet rattle is gone, so that's good. So job number one was successful, so let's uh, check out the clutch. Yeah, I think we're good. The uh, clutch operates as it should. The uh, bonnet squeak has been uh, dramatically reduced. Okay, a little few squeaks here and there, but not too bad. Seems to be running pretty well. Still haven't put any fresh gas in this, so that's be the first thing I do before I make my trip. So, we'll call that job one and two done for the uh, spring summer season, and we'll move on to something else. Maybe back on the 250. Can't tell it's got a bit of a cam in it. Just the last thing I need to do is uh, touch up this uh, fluid reservoir where I moved the band clamp that clamps it in place. So I've just got some black paint out and touched that up. Figured I'd also do a few other little touch ups while I'm there. There's a little scratching around where the bonnet rod goes into the slot. So we've uh, touched that up. So we've got the first coat on and we'll do a second coat and then we'll call it good. So I thought I'd tag a little bit of a mail call at the end of this video since I received a nice uh, little care package this week from uh, Steve Rains uh, that most of you all know as uh, Cutworm. So uh, Steve put a nice little box together for me including some nice uh, artwork. So uh, this one made me laugh. Uh, back of a Cheerios box apparently. And Stevie has done some uh, customization to let's say. So uh, I believe this is for Ellen. And that's quite a good uh, representation of him, Stevie, there. And he's got uh, his welder here, uh, you know, putting in a, you know what, he's got a little poodle, it looks like, too. Anyway, uh, he's going to put the welder to good use, I'm sure. So uh, we'll make sure I uh, pass this on to Alin so he can put it up on his, uh, on his wall at the shop. Well, thanks very much for that. 
The real reason I think Stevie sent me this package was uh, he had noticed that I needed to cut some holes in my TR4 fender uh, to fit the uh, side marker lights and he had this big step drill there so he thought I could uh, make some good use of that so he uh, sent that along in the care package as well as a nice little, I'm going to call it a little machinist hammer that he's customized, a little TR250 logo on the side. So a little, uh, nice little hammer with a little brass end and a little hard plastic end. So we'll put that to good use, probably in our little uh, engine building um, scenario that we got coming up soon, hopefully. And of course, Stevie's always going to add a sticker or two and some candy. He's got some fireball, atomic fireball gum in there. I think he's trying to kill me with that. And then some nice uh, lollipops. Who loves you, baby? So we've also got a few things this week uh, in order to help us with our TR250 project. Uh, these I'd ordered from Amazon and they took a little bit of while to come but I'm not ready for them yet anyway. Unfortunately I'm not making as much progress on the 250 as I'd like based on my, uh, my work schedule and my availability to work on the car. Um, so it is going to happen at some point. We're going to actually have to get the car into epoxy primer. I keep talking about media blasting. That hasn't happened yet, but it's going to have to happen soon because the humidity is uh, really kicking in up here and it's going to start to rust uh, pretty badly shortly. So uh, we've got the epoxy primer. This is the uh, Raptor a brand made by Upol. Um, obviously you can read there it's an anti-corrosive epoxy primer. I believe Ellen used this on his GT6 uh, project as well. So uh, we've got the 5 liter kit which uh, includes the hardener. So we'll uh, put that to good use uh, shortly. So uh, the next uh, follow up step to the um, epoxy primer is going to be I'm going to um, Raptor liner the entire bottom of the car. And I like the blacked out look in the wheel wells. So I'm going to be using the uh, Raptor liner in the wheel wells as well. And I'll probably actually do the inner fenders and uh, the body tub where the body color does not show. So I'll be using a pretty extensive um, use of the uh, Raptor liner on the TR250. I've got a 4 liter kit here. I've got their Schutz uh, spray gun that goes with the uh, to spray the liner. And I've got another couple of liters of uh, that product in there. So we've got 6 liters total for that so hopefully that will be enough. So that's going to be fun. So I'm glad we've got the products in house for that and uh, we'll just have to find the time to use them. And I have one more thing to share with you that's going to help with the uh, painting of the uh, TR250 when the time comes. And who knows, we may be able to utilize this to paint uh, LN's GT6 when the time comes. This is a brand new Satajet 5000B HVLP gun. This is a limited edition gun. This is the Morgan uh, Motor Car Company gun. And as you can see, the uh, Morgan logo up there. Nice picture of a Morgan here on the side of the gun. It's quite nice artwork actually. Show you the other side. Just careful with this. There we go. Handcrafted, built with rare skills. Again, another Morgan logo there. This is um, a 1.3 tip in it. So we plan on using this for so a base coat, clear coat gun. So there you go. Anyway, thought I'd share that with you. We'll probably get the um, the decup system for it, so I'll have to get an adapter for the cup. And uh, I've got an adapter already for my Concourse uh, gun from Eastwood, but obviously this is a uh, much better gun than the Concourse gun is, so we will uh, play around with this and see uh, what we can do with it. Alright guys, thanks for watching, uh, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you on the next video.